Welcome to St. John's virtual service. We're so glad that you joined us today. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Cathedral. We're so glad that you've joined us on behalf of the dean and all the people of our congregation. Uh, welcome. We hope you find inspiration in the service and that you'll be a worshiper and not just a spectator. And to that end, uh, we invite you to have three things in front of you. First is a prayer book so that you may follow along and participate in the prayers. Secondly, we invite you to have a candle nearby so when we begin our prayers here in the sanctuary and you at home, you can light your candle as we will light a candle here on the altar. And thirdly, we invite you to have bread in front of you so that you may per participate in uh, the holy meal when we come to that part of the service. We also ask you to have your cell phone nearby because during the announcements, 
the dean will give you access information on how you can make a virtual contribution uh, to the cathedral, its mission, and ministries. We begin our worship today with hymn 657, hymn 657. Worship continues in your prayer book on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, and blessed be, be God's his kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated at home for the reading. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. 
and the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the Western Sea, the Negeb and the plain. That is the Valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The land said to him, the Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all the servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is hymn number seven, 379. We will sing the first two stanzas prior to the gospel and the third verse following the gospel. Hymn 379.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Jane and Della were orphaned when their mother died. Jane was 12, Della was 10. They were adopted by a man who managed to adopt many young girls. He sold them, sold their bodies. In three more years, both teenage girls found themselves pregnant. They ran away. They went as far as they could on foot and stumbled upon a beautiful, large orchard. They slept in the orchard that night and the next day noticed a gentle man who took care of the trees. He offered them some fruit and they ate it voraciously. 
That evening, he cooked them dinner in his little house and put the plates out on the front porch for them to take, understanding that they might be frightened to come inside. And so Jane and Della made a home as this orchard with this gentle older man who never asked anything of them, but fed them and kept them safe. Months later, they both had their babies. The younger one, Della, lost her child, but Jane had a healthy baby girl. Together, they learned how to care for her and moved into the home of the orchardist. But one afternoon, they saw the man who had adopted them coming into the orchard with a bunch of men, and the two young girls ran. Jane had already set up a noose for herself on a tree. She hung herself. Della hid the baby in some leaves and just ran. The orchardist would later find the baby alive, but he buried Jane, and Della eventually would leave for good. So this old man ended up raising a little girl in an orchard full of apples. And the little girl didn't know anything about where she came from. She didn't know that she didn't belong there. All she knew was that she was loved. As she grew, he taught her how to pick the apples. He taught her how to do the chores. And as he grew older, she grew more mature, and gradually she took over more and more of the running of the orchard. And she found it so beautiful there, living there with him, so peaceful. She learned about the seasons and the beauty of the fruit. They loved to walk at night after dinner through the rows of trees and look at the beautiful stars above and talk. And as the old man aged, he got weaker and his heart grew weaker until she brought the bed out into their little living room by the wood stove so he could stay warm. And one day while she was out picking apples, the orchardist, the only father that she knew, died peacefully in that bed in the living room of their little house. And the girl tried to keep the orchard up, but eventually she had to sell it. She had to move to the city and get a job. But in her dream, she always dreamed of that orchard as her home, the place where she belonged. And in her dreams, she often saw at the end of an orchard not just the little house that she had lived in with the old man, but a big, beautiful white home where her mother was inside cooking and had an apron on, and she would see her mother's face for the first time. And the old man would be leaving the White House, walking down the hill towards her, and she would start running towards him. Years later, she traveled back to the orchard because she missed it, just to see what it was like, but it no longer looked like home to her. It was run down, and the old house was abandoned. In fact, she never did find a home like that again. That peace, that sense of belonging. You know, Moses was also an orphan. He also didn't belong. His mother had to give him up because Hebrew baby boys were being killed, and by God's grace, he was adopted by Pharaoh's household. 
But I'm sure that from the very beginning, Moses knew that he didn't belong, that he wasn't Pharaoh's biological son. It says in the book of Exodus that Moses had trouble speaking. He had a stutter. Psychologists tell us that stutters often occur when there's some kind of traumatic experience in the early childhood. What happened to Moses? Did he always know that he wasn't at home in Pharaoh's house? Did he always long to find his true home? And after witnessing one of his brethren, a Hebrew, being beaten by an Egyptian soldier, Moses kills the soldier and runs. He tries to make a home by marrying and working for his father-in-law Jethro, tending sheep. But God comes to Moses. And God calls Moses to lead an entire people into what I would call a liminal period, a period of enormous transition. You see, the Hebrew people went from being slaves to becoming a civilized nation that governed themselves, a nation that believed it was chosen by God. Moses was able, with God's help, to lead these people not only through the desert, but through a transformation to become the people of God. And he did this while searching for a home. The whole Hebrew people were searching for a home. When I say liminal period, the word limen in Latin is the very stone that was placed on the door, on the floor of a door. It was the stone that marked the entrance into a new house, into a home. To stand in between realities is to exist in a liminal stage. And the Hebrew people, for 40 years, walked on those limens, those stones, between two existences, between two realities, between slavery and freedom, chaos and order, oppression and self-confidence. And we too, at this time, in this country and all over the world, we are in a liminal period. This pandemic has placed us in a holding pattern of sorts. We are waiting. We are waiting to see what will the world look like when we're able to emerge from, from the fear of this virus. What will our social interactions look like? Will we be able to hug one another? Will we be able to worship together? Will we return to offices or work from home? And in a way, our liminal period is even greater than this pandemic because the whole human race is transferring itself onto technology in ways that we don't even fully understand. It is altering our consciousness and our language and our attention spans, and we don't know what it will look like to be human and to live in harmony with computers and use them, or will they use us? At the end of his life, Moses stands literally on the edge of the promised land. He's standing on a rock in the land of Moab, looking over into the valley of Jericho. And God shows him the whole promised land, from the western sea to Dan and Naphtali, to Judah, to the palm trees of the Jericho Valley. It's as if God is giving him a, a tour of all of this beautiful scenery. But then God says, 
You're not to walk into this land. Scholars believe that God determined this back in the book of Numbers. Moses followed God so faithfully, but there was this one moment when Moses was supposed to speak to a rock and the water would come out to quench the thirst of the Hebrews who were complaining again. And instead of speaking to the rock, Moses strikes the rock with a staff and says, we, meaning Aaron and himself, and maybe God, will bring water out of this rock. Was it that action of claiming responsibility for the miracle in lieu of God that made God angry? We don't know. But why wouldn't God let Moses come home? Why wouldn't God let Moses cross over, leave the liminal land, and enter the promised land? Why did he have to die right there on the edge? I've always struggled with that and felt kind of sorry for Moses. I mean, gosh, the guy never really had a home. Couldn't he just have one at the end? But then I realized, but maybe he did. You see, I believe that when Moses died, he found the true promised land. He stepped over that lemon, that rock that stands at the entrance of the house. And he walked into the place where he truly belonged. Just like he had looked out over the promised land, when he entered heaven it must have looked like that, but even greater, even more beautiful. What if our homes here are just a reflection of the true home? And what if this liminal period that we live in is really our whole lives. And in our lives, we are all in transition, not just during the pandemic, but at all times. As a human race, we are always journeying to find our home with God, to find that promised land, that place where we can walk between the apple trees and look up at the sky and find peace and companionship. Maybe the true home isn't really even here. We're supposed to try to make it here, to build the kingdom of heaven as best we can, but the real thing happens when we step over the real doorway into the true life beyond. I picture now that Moses didn't die feeling like he didn't make it there. But when he died, he arrived. And in the same way, many of us may not live through this period of transition. God willing, we'll live through the pandemic, but this transition to technology may take decades. We may never know what the human race will look like or how we will adapt, not fully, not within our lifespan. But when we step over that lemons, that rock of transition, we will know. Because that, my friends, is where we belong, our true home our promised land. And God will leave the White House and walk down to meet us and we will run and hold each other and see each other face to face. Amen.
And now turning in your prayer book to page 358, let us join the church around the world and throughout the ages and declare our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, in one, one God, Lord, the Father of the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, and earth of, of all that, that is seen and unseen. And unseen. We, believe we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the, the only Son, Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered in death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds, who proceeds from, from the, the Father and the Son. With, with the, the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He, he has spoken through the prophets. prophets. We, we believe in one holy, Catholic, Catholic and apostolic church. church. We, we acknowledge, acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please respond with the words, hear our prayer. As we pray together, please light the candle that sits beside your computer or television. Gracious and eternal God, you have created the human race in all its beauty and diversity. Bring an end to this pandemic that we may emerge safely and with greater reverence for human life and for this precious earth that you have given us. Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You sent the Holy Spirit upon us to teach us how to speak the language of others. Help us to listen to one another and learn from one another. Holy Spirit, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Restore to health all those who battle the coronavirus or any other Ill illness. Heal them and bless them. Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless those who have died. Welcome them into your loving embrace. Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Be present with those who suffer from economic hardship. Help us all to become bold innovators, steadfast in strength, a people of hope and generosity. Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Descend upon us as you descended upon the disciples in the upper room, that we may be so filled with your presence that we emerge to change the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, as we approach our November election, so many find ourselves increasingly gripped by fear, distrust, and anger. We ask you to help heal our nation from its dangerous divide. We pray that you give us the clarity to see that your truth manifests in many forms. We pray that you remind us that we are called to love one another as we are each made in your image. Guide us in creating an environment of honor and hope even when, and especially when, we don't see life through the same eyes. Lighten the burdens that have been placed upon us so that we may be the bearers of your light. Bless us with the wholeness of health, the sweetness of faith, the richness of wisdom, and the calming coolness of your peace and mercy. Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer.
O oh God, guide us during this election season. Bless the leaders of our land, especially those offering themselves for elected office, that we may be a people at peace and reconciliation among ourselves and a blessing to other nations of the earth. All this we ask through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to St. John's Cathedral's virtual service. We're so glad you've joined us here today. Please see our website for all the things that are going on here at the cathedral. Much of our life is virtual, but there is a lot that's going on in this building as well, so be sure to look at our website. We continue to collect food for the St. Mary's Food Pantry. You can drop off non-perishable food items here at the cathedral. Just remember to get one extra bag of groceries when you go to the grocery store. The altar flowers today are given from Ron Hafner and Bill Collins in Thanksgiving for 25 years together and in celebration of the birthday of Larry McKnight from his daughters, Robin, Kathy, and Nancy. This evening, Tim Tuller will pivot from piano to organ and will offer us a beautiful organ recital of Louis Vierne, second of a three-part series is tonight at 5 o'clock, in person and live stream through the church website. For the in-person concert, masks are required and social distancing will be practiced. There is a blood drive today this morning at the cathedral and we hope that you will come by. It lasts until one o'clock. No reservation is needed. If you are able to give blood, please consider doing so. The city needs you desperately. The clergy want also to be there for you or anyone who finds themselves lonely or under a great amount of stress. At this time, we have a confidential email address, clergy at jackscathedral.org. Please use that if you need to reach us. And last but not least, we hope you'll consider making a donation to the ministries of the cathedral. If you choose to do so and you dial the number 73256, and write in the message, J-A-X Cathedral, dollar sign and the amount. That will go through to us. Isn't that amazing? 73256, Jack's Cathedral and the amount. Remember Jesus' words. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For the amount you give will be the amount you get back. This week's musical offering is O Sacrum Convivium by the English Renaissance composer William Byrd. Byrd, who lived from 1540 to 1623, is one of the most celebrated English composers of any era. Byrd was a Roman Catholic in England during a time when being so was potentially dangerous. He composed music for both the Roman Catholic and Anglican liturgies. O Sacrum Convivium was intended for the former and was published in Byrd's musical collection Gradualia, two cycles of motets containing a total of 109 pieces, published in 1605 and 1607. In the anti-Catholic frenzy following the 1605 gunpowder plot, the first volume of Byrd's Gradualia was banned in England under penalty of imprisonment, as was all his Catholic music. Fortunately, Byrd was protected by his close relationship with Queen Elizabeth I. His music continues to be popular in both Roman Catholic and Protestant churches four centuries later.
As you gather at your screen, we invite you to draw your cracker or bread near you and those with you as we offer our life and labor um, unto the Lord, as we give thanks for all the benefits God has given us. All things come of Thee, O Lord, and of Thine own have we given Thee. Amen. We continue in your prayer book with Eucharistic Prayer B, page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error and to truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Moses and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as it is is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let let us keep keep the feast. feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. At this time, we invite you to take your bread or cracker and enjoy and join us for this agape feast, this holy meal. Our post-communion prayer is found in your prayer book on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you You have have graciously graciously accepted us as as living living members members of of your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ. and And you you have have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his his body and blood. blood. Send Send us us now into into the the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep us this day and forevermore. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
Thank you for joining our virtual service. Have a good week.